Reviewers, this episode of the JB and Benny Blue Review podcast is brought to you by our fine sponsors, starting with Brave New Urban. Brave New Urban is the design studio with the entrepreneur in mind. Visit bravenewurban.com to learn about their web design and logo design services, or just simply look at the great work they lace us with on our new logo and branding. That's right. Go to bravenewurban.com and use promo code the review and get 30% off your first project. Go to bravenewurban.com and use promo code the review to get 30% off your first project. And of course, we are brought to you by Pacific Home Buyers. Have you inherited a home or property? Are you going through pre foreclosure? Pacific Home Buyers helps homeowners in all 50 states get cash. That's right, cash for their homes. And their deals close within 7 to 14 business days. Visit packhomebuyers.com, that's P-A-C homebuyers.com, or call 323-963-3417, that's 323-963-3417, for more information on how they can help you get cash for your home today. Woo! Let's go. Hey, what's up, man? This is Big Pretty, man. I ain't, I ain't called you motherfuckers in like, goddamn, what shit? About a month and a half and shit, man, I had to come on. And check with you motherfuckers, man, because it's stock season, man. It's summer stock season, man. And I'm, I'm going to keep it real, man. Some of you bitches don't need to be out here wearing what you're wearing. I just drove past this bitch on Figueroa. You feel me? She was clearly a good, you feel me, offensive tackle. Could have went first round for the Cardinals, you feel me? And she out here rocking the motherfucking booty shorts with all the cellulite hanging out. All shorts are not created equal. You feel me? I got love for the big girls. You feel me? Ain't nothing wrong with it. You shop at Lane Bryant and shit, but do not be out here looking crazy. You dig? It's a big pretty, man. And five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Reviewers! Oh, the tanks are just now leaving the White House. Fuck out of here, Donnie! <laughs> Don, Donnie's over Robin Peter to pay Paul for his bullshit. And then, and then I already opened his JB. Donnie. It got, this shit got rained out. It got rained right. out. Dumbass Donnie. And God don't like ugly, man. Goddamn you know right. He don't like ugly. Here's what it Not is. But you know what he does like? He likes his podcast. He does. You know why? Because we are the true spirit of independence. This is the JB and Benny, right. Benny Blue Review for your listening pleasure. And speaking of the opposite of ugly, shout out. Uh, to again, leaving us a, a great message at the top of the Savage Hotline. <laughs> our dude, Big Pretty. Big Pretty. Big Pretty. Big Pretty in these streets, man. Big Pretty don't hurt nobody in these streets, my right. man. He's out, he's out there, you know what I'm saying? He's out, he's out there whipping a lack in downtown uh, Los Angeles. Uh, just look, just yeah. looking out for the for the, for yeah. the big girls. You know, he understands. You know, he's right, pretty, right. but he understands, you know, if you get a little, yeah. bit, a, a yeah. little, a little bit too much cellulite, you, like, you know, can get a, can get a cat lost lost yeah, in the motion. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, he yeah he down he down there on third. You know what I'm saying? In grand, you feel right? Me? You know, he's just, he's just, tr- he's just yeah. trying to look out for for the uh, for the ladies. Or excuse me, JB. Apparently, as are known uh, for this summer, as it apparently is a hot girl summer. I've heard, right, according yeah, to yeah. the internet, it's hey, a hot look. girl summer. Hey, and right now the hot girls are losing to the hot boys. You know what I'm saying? We are winning in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Because the hot girls are taking major L's. Oh yeah, they get, they're getting finesse left they're and take, right. Yeah, they're taking mad L's. You know what I'm saying? It's just not looking good for the hot girls. The hot boys are up by about 104th. Looks like this summer's ours. Yeah, it's, it, it's going down. Uh, the hot boys, the hot boys. You know what I'm saying? We on fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All that. You know, we the one. We the originators. You know what I'm saying? Damn right. Shit. Speaking of you. Shout out to Miss Shout out to Miss Aisha Deal, you know what I'm saying? She tweeted a couple days ago that the Hot Boys had officially won the summer yeah, already. Future guest, Aisha Deal. Yeah. Future guest, yes. Miss Aisha Deal. We, we uh yeah, we Miss Deal said we already won it. So we already won it. Damn. That's a all we gotta do is just just, just the state of court. Right, yeah. You know, you, you got the lead, don't don't blow it, fellas, so I'm saying. That's right. Um hey, speaking of which, speaking of the summer. Literally, literally, right. Li- literally don't blow it. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hey man, we're coming. We're coming to you live. JB and Benny Blue Review Podcast, episode one twenty three at JB and Benny Blue for all your social media needs. Mm. Um, you know we're on all platforms. You can find us, punch us in the Googles, and you will find us. Make sure to subscribe. Give us a five star rating on iTunes. And hey, if you pops up right, man. and if you want to leave, we popping, we popping. You damn right. And speaking of which, if you want to leave us a fine message like our guy Big Pretty, you can answer that number eight one eight. 850-2804. Who? Mike five? Jones? No, it's us, bitch. No, no, hell no. Give us a message. It's the boys. And, or leave us a voice note on the slide in the DMs at JB and Benny mm. Blue, and we can help you out with that. 
And uh, yep. yeah, man, um, that's how you can get in tune with us. Um, JB, speaking of the summertime, uh, for the Fourth of July weekend, we're recording this. How Ooh. was your Fourth of July weekend? A good sir. It was good. It was good, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, folks came off to of LA, and uh, my, of course, it was a nice birthday. Happy 15th, baby girl. Uh, she's an independence baby. Uh, Happy a birthday. firework baby, like my, like my homegirl called it. She's a firework baby. But uh, yeah, so, you know, it was good. Just cooking, you know, fellowshipping, and, uh, you know, just, just, just chicken. Just chilling, laid back, you know what I'm saying? Just, just posted. Word. What about what about yours, there, sir? I know you out there in the, in the greater Midwest. Yeah, man. Well, your your man's is back in uh back in, in the homeland, um, the dirty dirty ski, aka the two three one, and um, mm. we got got to hit got to hit the beach. It's great, beautiful Lake Michigan. Did did a little did a little tour de force, tour de food. So you know had 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 had, had, what, had what they call uh in the fitness world a cheat day, solid cheat day. Right. I really stuck, JB. I really stuck the landing on this one. You're talking. Oh, I'll bet. You're talking Coney dogs. You talking yeah. Scribs Pizza, which is which is the hood dank pizza, and then we had yeah. it, it was summertime, so we had it we had it at the Frosty Oasis. You know, I got I got the turtle yeah. Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It was it was it was, was a nice it was a nice uh, day with, with the family. I uh, caught up with some yeah. cousins. It was real brief. I didn't really get to really touch the homeland like I normally would. Right. It was in and out yeah, type yeah. of situation. And now we're down here in, in the Ville. Um, your man's got a show here on Tuesday, and I'm actually going to be doing panel on a game show, so that's going to be some interesting uh, shit. And then I'm yeah. back in LA at the Comedy Store, and then I got my show, the Blue Light Special Two, on the 20th. Um, uh, so mm. it's going down. And a little, a little boy, he told me that perhaps oh. could be the Savage Duo may be back in these LA streets one oh, one weekend only. Man, oh like a man. Vegas show. Hey, look. I don't know. I don't know. We have to keep the people surprised on this one. You know what I'm saying? We're we going to see. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Possibly. Gonna see. Only, Could be. Only, only time will tell. Mm-hmm. That's right. Only time will tell. So, our viewers, it is getting into the summertime. But, uh, you know, I got to say, we were talking about this in our patent pre production meeting. We are thoroughly entertained by yeah. what's been happening um, in the NBA offseason world. Because, you know, they find they, they find do. a way to keep the conversation going. But They do. They do. This is a friendly reminder to tell you mm. that we are nine weeks away from kickoff. Nine, nine weeks. weeks. It's going down. It's like nine weeks test. Yeah. It's it's a great feeling. It's going down. But we promise reviewers, I know cats are getting sick of NBA. Who's signing here? Who's signing here? Who's signing there? Well, guess what? We're going to go in today and leave you with something nice. And then, damn it, we're going to put it on ice because we got other yep. business to handle. Rap City. Rap City. We are done with it. After we get through talking about this, mm-hmm. we are freaking done with, with freaking basketball. Yep. So let's break it down. Let's freaking, break it down for the people. Fricks. Freaking fricks. Yeah, freaking plenty, plenty, plenty of fricks. Yep. For these fucking freaking fricks. Freaking guys. Um, yeah. So let, let's break down a recap real quick. Obviously, uh, the thing that been happened mm-hmm. was the Anthony Davis trade that happened. That's official. Yeah. Now he's there. They filled out the rest of their team. Yeah. All that. Got him. You know what I mean? They got mm-hmm. Boogie there. They got some other cats. Bartjavel McGee back. Dan, Dan, Danny Green was their key free agency signing besides AD. Yeah, probably Danny the Green best. They, they, need, they need shooting. Free agency signing. Yeah, they needed shooting yeah. badly. And did you think about the defense as well? Yeah, uh, he, he's going he's gonna to run with the two groups. Think about how good that defense is going to be. It's going to be crazy. Right? It was actually, actually smart of them to re-sign that kid uh, Alex Caruso too. Um, they oh, need yeah. to keep Caruso him to develop. Back. They need guards badly. Right. Yeah, Caruso signed back. Rondo came back, yeah. which was great for them. Uh, again, the Javale McGee. Uh, I mean, they got they got a really good. Oh, uh, they kept Kuzma, which I think was 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 an excellent choice. Yep. He has the most upside. You know what I'm saying? He plays multiple positions, being a three. The two, I think the three, four, and the five. So uh, they can go small ball if they like. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty good deal for them. Good for them, man. Yeah. So the so so the Lakers are are, are getting back to their winning ways. Uh, basically, you know, based on what they got, but obviously, you never know how shit's gonna shake uh, out. However, on 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 paper, on paper. However, across uh, that hallway, oh, um, they're shaking the bacon. Ooh, Ricky Bobby, look. Mm-hmm. So Kawhi Leonard. Shakes up the basketball world by agreeing to sign with the LA Clippers, right? After, <coughs> ooh, <coughs> hold on, ooh, okay. After we, so cold we to sneeze, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, after we, after we, everybody thought he was going to the Lakers. Just to be completely real, it's looking um, like that. 
why just you know what I'm saying? The guy from ESPN, you know what I'm saying? Wait, 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 what was that word again? I just watch, watch this fucking guy. Uh, Pretty much laid it down. He was going to the Lakers. Everybody thought he was going to the Lakers. Everybody, all the Lakers fans are super excited. Sonny Freya. Yep. Sonny he signs with the Clippers, which I think was a great move, man. I, I agree. Uh, it was a great shift of power, shift of balance in the league at that point. Uh, because honestly and truly, if Kawhi would have went to the Lakers, it just would have been the Golden State Warriors again. Mm-hmm. Right? What about it going to beat them dudes? No, I'm sorry. Uh, so he goes, Kawhi, that is, goes. And as soon as that happens, A1, Paul George, PC-13, is over there at Oklahoma. He's like, yeah, I need to go. They would like the bathroom down the hall and left. No, I need to <laughs> go. I need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and he did. Yep. Flew the coop. So, so guess what he went? Flew the coop, if you Flew will. The coop. Right back to the crib. Back in L.A. All right, so L.A. is not an epicenter of basketball. Yeah. Right? It is. It's the epicenter of basketball. So, uh, I mean, other notable free agency signings, um, Kyrie Irving signed with the Brooklyn mm-hmm. Nets, along with the one Kevin Durant, who probably won't play basketball next year. He was year. also changing his but number, yeah. apparently, to, oh, Joe, to Joe Johnson's yeah. number seven. To zero? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <Damn. laughs> But uh, so okay, Joe Johnson's number seven. Okay, great. Well, you know it's what? A new Just chapter, what baby. He, what is he like? What is he like a multi? like a multiple of thirty-five. That's what he did. Like what? Right. Uh, I guess that's care. true. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Right. Who cares, bro? Like honestly, who cares? You change the number because like why? Because LeBron changed his number. Like you gonna be one up on LeBron? Is that what you're doing? Is that what it is? Right. Like. And that you know that that's just kind of how you think, right? You know, somebody somebody asked something on Twitter the other day, and I just simply put because he's a punk, all right? Let's be real, reviewers out there, you rock with us for a while. Yeah, you know what it is, all right? You know how I feel about Kevin Durant, all right? I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it again. Probably one of the most prolific scorers that the NBA has ever seen. If you're gonna make a my player, Kevin Durant probably would be that guy, mm-hmm. all right? But he's a punk. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a punk. He's a punk to the tenth power. To just the tenth power. Damn. Sensitive thugs, they all need hugs. He's one of those guys. So again, we talked about how, how he's a beta male. He's not gonna sign somewhere where he has to be the man. So Kyrie and him concocted. So he's like, you know, Kyrie likes to shine. So I can go just kind of back him up. Cool. Let's do it. Let's go to Brooklyn. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving in Brooklyn. Um, are they contenders, Benny? Are they? Are they? Is it gonna be magic from the, from the door as soon as he gets healthy? If anything, I think it's actually kind of a good thing as opposed to what's been happening um, with some of the other teams because I think Brooklyn already had a good thing going because they're one of of the few teams in the league, JB, that I think really maximized player development with what they had. Because think about it. They went to the playoffs, and they had an all-star on their team with a squad that was basically... Angel Russell and a couple really right. other good young role players. But the good thing is right. they didn't really have to give up a lot from that team. Bingo. It's yeah. really intact. Right. You got Dinwiddie, you got Karis LeVert, right. you got Joe Harris. Mm-hmm. Um, right. There's a, there's a bunch of other cats that, that that played meaningful minutes for their team. Yeah. So they can get this will get. I, and here's the other thing too. You want to talk about sensitive? We all know Kyrie's bullshit of what he was doing oh, with yeah. Boston. All right. This yeah, gives yeah, them a yeah. good chance for, and honestly, I think it's good that he has he has a good star that he can consider his peer. KD right. can be can be on the bench, be in a suit, you know, walking around a little limp for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Right, he can right. put his hand on Kyrie's shoulder, but listen, bro, you're speeding, you're moving too fast. He can keep him, he can help keep him in line and help him make sure that he's maximizing his leadership, so that way they can set a good foundation. For when he actually comes back and is able to play meaningful ball, so obviously they're not going to uh, they're not going to contend this year, but right. I think that they are going to be in a really good spot moving forward because you got to figure Milwaukee's time is now, and if they don't get it done, they may have to they may have to bust a move. They brought back Middleton, they brought back Rook Lopez, they lost Brogdon to Indiana. Right. Indiana made some good moves. Right. Um, then you have Philly. Philly loses Butler, but they get Al Horford, so they're going to be right in the mix. And obviously Toronto, now that Kawhi's left and Danny Green's left, Toronto's going to go into rebuild, which makes sense. You know, right. they got Pascal Siakam, they got a couple of the young people, right. you know, your, your man your man on fleek, Van Fleet, they got him. All fleet. You know what I'm saying? So they can build around him and, and Siakam, and then, you know, do you know do what they do with the rest. So, realistically, it's actually a good position 
for uh, Brooklyn to be in that spot to where they can get what they need to get out of this year and then bust a move for next year. That way there's no real big issue to when they're ready to contend because that way not only will that window kind of open up because you already know you need you need a little you need a little bit of luck to make some shit right, happen. Of course. So yeah, right. let the Bucks, let the let Philly battle it out. One of those two teams is probably going to go. Indiana's probably the sleeper team of those three is probably mm-hmm. going to go and face whoever's going to be in the West. And then the next year they're going to have a shot. But as you mentioned, as you so eloquently broke down all the different uh, you know moves and grooves in the NBA, here's the theme. As you kind of mentioned with the Warriors, now we're entering the era of, and I'm actually a big fan of this. I'm not even going to lie to you. We're entering the era of the dynamic duo. And to be honest with you, I think it should be this way. I think every team should have two very, very good players and a bunch of very good role players around them. I think that's the Benny, illest way to break down the NBA. Benny, if you don't remember, I said this last year. I said that when they, everybody's talking about the super teams and Kevin Durant going, well, when Kevin Durant first went to Golden State, I said it. I'm a firm believer that the, that the NBA should, shouldn't allow any more, any more than two star players. I agree. Yeah, and you did say that. that they should correct. not allow any more than two I want to say all stars, and if you like, you really, like, you really want to break it down to make the league super fair. I agree. Vote all NBA teams should not have no more than two all stars on their team. Correct. Like that would just make everything great, and that dynamic duo thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of indirectly happening, right? Which is a great thing. I'm with you, Benny. I'm, I'm a fan of this shit. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Give me the dynamic duo, and then so if you got some couple good role players, and you just happen to get them, hey. Here's what it is. But exactly. you got two guys that are available to get the max contract. Let's put it like that. How about that? I agree. Because you can say, yeah, you can't say all-star because some people just might look up and make the could all-star. Could be all-NBA, could be, like, oh, could be, be all-star. Team. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. So, no, that are available to receive a max contract because they are that statute, statute of play. Right. That's got to be the stipulation. Right. And I think the good thing is that he's, as you kind of said, it's happening naturally. I think what you know, what's 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 doing that, what's doing that is, is the bag, the money, mm-hmm. the brink truck. The money. That's kind of doing that. I think it's kind of yeah. doing it naturally because ultimately, I think event, you know, the, these cats are kind of getting to a point where it's like, yeah, of course, I want to play with this person, this person, but ultimately, you know, it's it's a salary cap league. You know, so now it's like you can't get to the point where it's like you're paying you're paying this dude league minimum. It's like, no, nah, man, we we ain't going. It ain't, ain't going to go down like that. We're not doing the Super right. Friends BS. Nah, like mm-hmm. that's and that's what I mean. The interesting thing you talk about the um the Paul George thing. Apparently, uh, old boy Presty was actually trying to shop Russell Westbrook. Him and Westbrook. He was trying to shop a deal with, with Westbrook. Yeah. And it begs the question. I heard it was, I- I heard it was him. I heard it was George and Westbrook. Yeah, he, he was, was trying to get. Yeah, yeah, he was trying to get them to the rappers, but he was also right, looking yeah. at opportunity to, to move Westbrook, which honestly I think at this point makes sense. And like, look, Jimmy Butler's in Miami. Send Westbrook to Miami. You can get some good pieces back in return. They they got they got a goddamn king's ransom for PG. They got four unprotected first rounds. They got that uh, that Shea Gillis Alexander cat, who's a really good young player, and they got they got right. another player too. I forgot the second player they got, but they got they honestly they low key kind of got more than the Lakers gave away for AD. They sent right. four first round picks, unprotected or not. That's 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 risky. That's a lot to that's send. A lot. That's a lot, but. That's like uh, the Ricky Williams the stepping up to get Ricky Williams. Huh? Exactly, and, so, and the Clippers. The Clippers knew they had to do it. The Clippers knew they had to do it because oh, yeah. if they didn't, if Kawhi yeah, went to the yeah. Lakers, you might, yeah. you might, you might as well, yeah. you might as well ship, ship the uh, ship the Clippers off to you know Buffalo you know, Clippers. Send them hey, the angry, the the angry Clippers. Look, if they go to Buffalo, if they went to Buffalo, man, they had a, 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 an automatic fan base because ain't shit else doing Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? So, and I believe that's where they're. They, is that where they're originally from? Is Buffalo? Didn't they start in Buffalo and they the, moved to San Diego? The Clippers. Yeah. Oh man, that's some research, right? Look this up right now. There it is. There it is, right now. Los you Angeles the clicking. Clippers. If you're the, you hear the clicking of the, the, the tap, 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 ruse on the, uh, you know what I'm saying? I believe they started in Buffalo. Yeah, they were the uh, they were the Buffalo Braves from 1970 Buff- to 1978. Then they became the San Diego that's Clippers. Right. And then the that's right. And then one of the worst human beings in the world, Donald Sterling, uh, purchased them. From San, the guy who owned them in San Diego and brought them to LA, right. and he brought a, his whole slumlord and 
racist ass with him as well. So there you go. And now oh, we got now we got now you, we got dude. crazy Steve. Crazy Steve's all all hop, hopped up on gas station dick pills in the front row of the game. You know what I'm saying? High fiving everybody and ripping his shirt off. But hey, I'll take that over the alternative because hey, in the words, look, in the words of Bob. In, yeah, in the words of Bob Minery, Rippers and Magoo. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on. Yeah, the Rippers and Magoo. Shout out to Bob Minery, man. Hey, we gotta get this guy on the podcast. This dude is wild as shit, bro. Funny as hell. He's a, he's an awesome cat. I, I think I got a connection to that. Oh, though. good. All right. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know us. We got I, connections to a lot of cats, so. I think I got that connection, though. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, I got the hook. Hey, up. Shout out to Bob Minery. if you hear me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No Master P. Yeah. <laughs> Bad bitches in there after me. Yeah, 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 man. That, yeah, man. That's what happened in free agency. Now, JB, you brought you brought up a team in uh, you brought up a team in, in New York City, but oh, one it, uh, it was it was it, it was a Brooklyn. You brought up Brooklyn. Oh man, there's another team that uh, this is go- yeah. it's gonna hurt some some uh, people who are close to the show and uh, just you know people it from is, the man. tri-state area in general who cannot take it take it snow mole. Um, yeah. Apparently they, they cleared the decks. They thought, oh boy, we got we got all this money. We got we, we got all this money. Look at all this money. Come come hang on, we got all this money. Look at all this well, money. Look at the allure. Look at the allure. Look, 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 look at the garden, look at the yo. Look at the allure. Look at the allure. Well it's New York City. All right? It's Times Square. Right. Madison Square you Garden. Know? You know, it's Manhattan. You know? It's all that, right? We can get whoever the fuck we wanna come here. Yeah. All right, yep. we're gonna do it yep. too. Kevin Durant's coming yep. here. Yeah, Ky- yep. Kyrie Irving is coming. Hell, even Kawhi Leonard is coming. They're all gonna. Kawhi, they're all gonna sign. Kyrie, KD, you know, all the K. Spike Lee's gonna be front row. Spike Lee, still there. Yeah, he 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 you know? Spike Lee gonna change his name to a K. You know right, <laughs> right. You know, fucking Kike Lee. Right. <laughs> so look. <laughs> Sorry, all look. apologies to our Jewish friends. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. Sorry. <laughs> So look, we out here in these streets, man. All right? If you don't know what we're talking about, reviewers out there, we're talking about the New York Knicks about Yes. Or JB, right? as, as I like to call them for this segment, the Nayo Knicks. That's what they are this the one. The Yo Knicks. Yep. That's, that sounds about yep. right, though. That sounds about NY. Yep. So um, if you guys have been hiding under the rock, New York didn't get anybody. Yep. All right? No... Quote unquote. Oh, they signed some cash, yeah, like we, but yeah, they didn't. Uh, well, yeah. What do I so talk about? Like max contract type Correct. dudes, like we talked about, right? They did draft a young RJ Barrett, who's going to be a superstar in this league. All right, uh, congratulations to that young man. Uh, they also signed who? Julius Randle. It was a good signing, right? Yeah. Which was a good sign because he's a hell of a ball player. Um, who else did they get? Well, they got they got uh, they got marquee marquee <laughs> names like Bobby Portis and Reggie Bullock and. Oh. Uh, a couple other people, and it just, oh. it's, yeah, it's, uh, oh, okay, yeah, but, right, okay, the reason why we want to bring this up, reviewers, is while your yeah. favorite talking head and, 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 and shows are bearing the Knicks, which a lot of it's justified, yeah. we want to touch on the fact that it's actually a good position if they follow the blueprint of a team that just happens to be across the bridge. Because ah. lest we forget, <laughs> Mr. Bridges, this team actually went through some BS before they got to the position where they signed KD and Kyrie. Right. Allow me to right, explain. Right, right. So, yes. for those who forgot, the Brooklyn Nets, when they're owned by the, the Russian the Russian mobster, they managed to trade away many, many, many draft picks <laughs> to the Boston Celtics. All right. Mm-hmm. In return, they got old-ass KG... Legend, but he was old. Paul Pierce, mm-hmm. again, Legend. year old. They got uh, who they get? They got um, was it Rondo in that deal? Well, they had they had they had Darren Williams, right? Yeah. They had Joe Johnson. They had a team that they thought that was actually going to contend, and they had some good moments, but ultimately they they knew that it, it, it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to happen for them. So what yeah. happened? It set the team back many many years. And in the meantime, Boston got Jason Tatum, they got Jalen Brown, they got Terry Rozier. Right. They loaded up mm-hmm. off of that trade, which ended up being a really good trade for Boston. But right. here's the thing. New York is in a good position because, number one, all of those deals, I believe, most if not all, are, are one plus one deals. Where the second year is a team option. 
Now, the New York casual New York Nick fan is saying, "Oh, but that shit doesn't matter, son, because once that once the all the deals expire, the same BS is going to happen again." Wrong. All right. You actually have a core of some good young players that if you make sure they get their minutes and make sure these guys that you sign aren't taken away from their minutes, that will actually set the tone very similar a la <laughs> Brooklyn. Brooklyn was able to do that with Karis LeVert, Harris, and when they got young D'Lo Russell from the Lakers, yep. that's exactly what they helped him do as well. They let those guys flourish and play, and they match them with the right coach. So with the Knicks, right. you got Alonzo Trier. You got, as you mentioned, JB, they got um, R.J. Barrett. And they got the cat mm-hmm. Mitchell Robinson and Kevin Knox. And Julius Randle is still a good young player. Right. And here's the thing. Yeah. The kind of putting the ball on this, you have to develop and you have to attract. Just like when you're trying to get a woman that you really want. See, we were talking right. with CJ, we were talking about this cap space, and uh, just like a woman, you cannot yeah. trick off your money to purchase a woman's time, energy, or respect. You can't do it because maybe can't maybe she'll it. come for the money. You can't win like that. But uh, oh, the next shiny thing, she'll uh, she'll get she'll get the stepping on your ass, New York City. That's right. So that's right. if you want to attract the things you want, you have to have a good foundation, and that's exactly mm-hmm. what Brooklyn did. They put themselves in a position to know, even if we're going to miss out on KD for a year of playing, it doesn't matter because right. we have a sound foundation of good, right. young, strong role players that can help build this culture to put them in a position right. where you plug in KD, you're going to be a contender. Right. right. He doesn't, they don't want to go to a damn empty cabinet. Nobody wants to go to an empty exactly. pantry. Exactly. So, so reviews I do with Benny is just laying down to you guys that right now, the, the 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 higher ups of the New York Knicks right now have a plan, and of course I, you have to know that they're looking across the bridge, they're cheating on the test, mm-hmm. right? You have to know that they're doing it, and why not? You're right. Brooklyn has done an amazing job of building, all right? Ground zero, building yep. blocks, you know, laying laying a foundation, yep. cement Quality down, front office. and starting to put yep. right, and starting to put blocks on top of that foundation. Okay, well, New York is doing the same thing right now. They they drafted R.J. Barrett, all right. Uh, Again, phenomenal young player. I think he's going to be a basically a James Harden 2.0 yeah. that actually plays. Actually, when I say 2.0, he actually plays defense. Right. Uh, with, all, with all the young guys you talk about, with the Randles, you know what I'm saying, and so on and so forth, they're laying down a beautiful bed of flowers. Why, you ask reviewers, so they can attract a big time free agent. All right? So, we'll see what the future holds for them. Um, you know, mess, they mess around and win 45 games this year. I don't know how it happened. But you know what I'm saying? I just I just feel like that, you know, that just doesn't matter because that foundation that they have there, that young nucleus that they have there, is, is gonna attract a big time player that wants to come play with a young RJ Barrett. I think somebody will go. Correct, because you because you can't you can't just sit there and clear the decks and have all that money when people are know they're walking into some BS. Because think about it, right. you know, that Brooklyn also signed DeAndre Jordan. Where did DeAndre Jordan play mm-hmm. last year? He played in New York. For the Knicks. Right. And he told right. KD and Kyrie, he literally told them, don't come here. It's some bullshit. They don't know what right. they're doing. Right. That's bad. So, chill. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You got veteran players like, yo, kick back on these motherfuckers. They ain't got it. Right. So, if they follow the blueprint, man, I think they'll be all right. They'll get a, they'll get a player. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Somebody come in there uh, and, and help them out. Uh, so. Yep. Sometimes you can't, you can't be too proud, JB. Sometimes you can't. When you, you, when can't you need to it. learn, you need to learn, you know? Hey, look, if you, if you stop learning, you stop living. That's my motto. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Knicks, don't stop living, all right? And we wish you all the best. You know my motto, Benny, is that certain teams are just good for professional sports. Yes. And when the Knicks are good, it's just good for professional sports yes. because they're, they're a story franchise. Yes. So, get back on this grind. With, with all this balance that's going on right now in the league, I think they'll be okay. Yeah, and it would it would be it would be fun as hell if nothing else for the for the psycho ass Knicks fans for the Knicks to be good again because it's a fun energy, man. It's a fun energy when the Knicks well, are good. Well, we got the psycho ass Laker fans happy again, so that's one program that, that you know it's in ball club that's back on point. So yeah, why not have the uh, right. poser on on the far east right. coast? I far east coast, right. you know what I'm saying <laughs> over there. Over there, son, done, son, you know right. what I'm saying? Done, son. Right. Yeah. Next, we need y'all to get your shit together. Exactly. 
We'll tell you, please. We'll tell you what, we're, we're, we're keeping our shit tight. So we are going to go into a special advertisement announcement. But Word. when we come back, oh, because it's ladies' night. Ladies. And the feeling's right. Yeah. It's ladies' night. Oh, what? Oh, oh, what oh, night. oh, what oh night. it's going down. We have some yeah. shout for the ladies who are crushing it yes. out here in the sports streets. And the we're going to let out here in these streets. JB and I are going to let you, yes, you, the viewers, know Ooh. how you no. can support Women's that's sports, right. god damn it. Because it's that time of year, Show man. Love. We ain't got much, but damn it, we got we got the, the ladies love. holding it down. Uh, right, right. All that good shit and more when we come back. You are listening to the JB and Benny Blue Review podcast, and we'll be right back. Damn right. You bitch. You yeah. bitch, yeah. What's up, reviewers? Have you heard about making money in real estate, but you're not sure how to get started? Now you have an opportunity to learn about the housing market while earning commission on new deals. Pacific Home Buyers is a Southern California-based real estate investment group that is seeking experience and hungry phone salespeople to help them find the best homes on the market for sale. And the best part? There's no real estate experience required. Hours are flexible, and you can earn big money on closed deals for just getting home sellers qualified. Call us now at 323-963-3417 for more information on how you can get started that's 323-963-3417 pacific home buyers your home sale starts here we back that song that did, that did yeah. one 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 and then it was grooving with the black leather on one 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 you remember that joy i was thinking i was thinking of uh, i was thinking of uh lost ones jay-z Speaking of Brooklyn, no, 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 we talking about the one, one. We talking about we talking, with it with a Run DMC right, sample. We talking about Harlem, baby. You know what I'm saying Harlem, baby. We talking about Harlem, right, right. Oh please, oh please believe we got the uh, for that whole last segment we had the the, the viewers will note the uh, special delivery instrumental oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. through the 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 we appreciate you. Hope you hopefully you are enjoying your summer thus yeah, far and yeah. uh allowing us to be your audio soundtrack yeah, if, you if you will. will. You know what I'm saying? If you don't uh, mind. <laughs> yeah. As JB sips on that honey. That's, 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 that's delightful. You know, it's delightful. Yeah. It really is, man. Mm-hmm. It's been a good day, man. You know what I'm yep. saying? It's a Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Uh the seventh of July has been a good day. Uh you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a spiritual guy, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes reviewers out there, you know what I'm saying, you feel like that you're missing God's presence. You know what I'm saying? That you're missing God's yep. favor. So what I did today, many, I got back in my Bible, man. So I've been reading. And I and I have a my closet is my prayer closet, Benny, you know what I'm saying? But you've been in my you've okay. been in my home before, Benny, but you've never been in my closet. My closet is uh Yeah, that would, that would yeah. be that would, that would suggest something right, else. Yeah, like. exactly. So my closet <laughs> is um my closet is is honestly about uh, about a fourth of the size, about a third of the size of my bedroom. All right, and my bedroom is, is fairly big, mm-hmm. so uh, and I go in my closet, and I, you know, I, I I have my little prayer area, and I close the door behind me. And if for, for viewers out there, I'm not trying to get too religious, but if you don't do this, do it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of what the Bible suggests that you go into the wilderness. But if you can't go into the wilderness, you got to close yourself off from the world. Right, a quiet place. You close yourself yeah. off from the world, and you, it's like Benny said, a quiet place, and you talk to God. How you talk to God? You know, you speak to Him. In, in all sincerity and all that good stuff. So, yeah, feel good, Benny. You know what I'm saying? Went and worked out. Had it worked out for a couple of days because yep. it's 4th of July. It's kind of pinned my ass back. Uh, we were getting it in. And you know, I don't do it too often, Benny. You know what I'm saying? So, I was uh, right. a little crippled afterwards. But, hey, you know, we, <laughs> we back. <laughs> we back, goddamn. We back. We back. We back. A little, say a little crippled we afterwards. I really was crippled. Like, my, yeah, my body was sore and shit from, from the workout I did on Friday. Uh, was Friday. Yeah, when was Fourth of July? It was on Thursday, or Friday. It was on Thursday. Yeah. So from the yeah. workout I did Fourth of July, the day of the Fourth of July, which is my second leg day, plyometric work. Oh uh, yeah. So you know my my yeah, lower back that? hamstrings, all knees was hurting in them. Oh boy. Tight, 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 yeah, tight, 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 yo. I was tight, yo. Anyway, review. I'll tell you like what. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. He was lifting. JB. I'll tell you. He was lifting our spirits. And uh, do do doing some of that some of the heavy lifting for us in the summer. The goddamn women oh, out here these crushing ladies, it. Uh, these ladies are going crazy, as the young folks say. They go crazy, as the young folks say. Like, man, where should we start? Um, how about let's start let's start with the champions first. How about that? Let's start with some some groups that have won yeah. 
uh, yeah. that have won medals and won championships, trophies and medals. Mm-hmm. Starting with our U.S. women's soccer team. Uh, wow. Back to back on that ass. Defeating, defeating the Netherlands today in the championship. Two to Nathan. All right. That's right. Two to nil, as they say in soccer to speak. Nil. Is that what they say? That what they say? So mm-hmm. two to nil, yep. man. Uh, these ladies are amazing. I love the fact, Benny, that they are so ratchet. Like, I, I, are, have you ever watched our girls play? Yeah, and I've seen their celebrations, right. too. They, I love they are. I love every minute of it. From the field to the celebrating of scores to the locker room, they are a ratchet group. And guys, you know, from uh, reviewers out there don't know our, our, our girls' soccer team, or sorry, I'm sorry, our ladies' soccer team, uh, these are grown women, all right? Some white, some black, some Hispanic, you know what I'm saying? But, oh, they in there twerking and, you know, and then having to enjoy some, some adult beverages and... Right. America! As you should when you right? win. America! You won the title, damn it. It's, it's, you won the cup. It's just good to see, man. It really is. Um, second group today that got out to get down is our U.S. women's softball team. I guess it's only our, it's just, just That's our right. U.S. softball team. We don't have a men's softball team. Correct. So Correct. our ladies' softball team, our U.S. ladies' softball team, man, over Japan 2-1. to one. Uh, I watched most of the game because I was watching it at the gym. Uh, Japan is a really good softball team now. Uh, it looks like a bunch yep. of little boys out there playing, but we understand that's just kind of how it goes. All right, so mm-hmm. our girls got with them, man. It's rally late too. I'm, I'm talking about probably the bottom of the six. Um, we we scored right. two runs in the bottom of the six, if I'm not mistaken, and went into the seventh and, and got them out with some good pitching and won the game. So shout out to them ladies, man. Trophies, medals, and they went back to back, back as well, back as well, back to back goals. Yeah, right. So medals, trophies. Woo! Hey, we bringing it in mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Talking about bringing it in, right? There's a young lady out there in Wimbledon right now, all right? In these in these London streets, these, these you know what I'm saying? These mm-hmm. Wimbledon streets, foggy London, foggy town. London town streets. Young Coco Golf, you know what I'm saying? Not to be confused with Jerry Golf, right? No relation, all right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you never you never know nowadays, yeah. So she's a. Uh, 15-year-old African-American young lady from Atlanta, Georgia, ATL, Georgia. What do we do? Fowler, bulldog and hoes like them Georgetown hoes. And that's exactly what Coco is doing. Bulldog and hoes like them Georgetown hoes, man. The baby yep. is out there getting it cracking. And she had her her faith and her 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 will tested in her last match. Yeah. Comeback she season. She was down. Yep. She was down. And and focused up and, and came back and got the fucking victory shout out to that baby she's 15 years old man yeah man going into manic monday she's the second youngest to ever do it uh going into yep. manic monday man so she's got what three more matches to win if i'm not mistaken yeah, she's in she's she's in round round of 16 yeah. 16 8 four and then the right, championship right. so she yeah she can go that far hey, she's 15 years old so you know she's just she's a ball of energy you know what i'm saying so her getting right. fatigued i don't think it's gonna be an issue uh, as we spoke about in our patent production meeting, again, I, I like to use the analogy uh, or reference the movie uh, Friday Night Lights with this situation right now. And if anybody, yep. if All anybody's rose. seen it, where the announcer says about Odessa Permian football, how great they do them, but he's there. The bad news is all roads lead to Dallas Carter. <laughs> so at right. this point, right now, with a monster of a woman who is. I guess you can say on the other bracket. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Name Miss Serena Williams. You might have heard of this chick. Uh, she's yeah. had a little. She, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe you're right, familiar. She's had, a, she's had a little success in this tennis thing. All roads lead to her other idol because she beat her her other idol. I guess you could say Miss Venus Williams. All roads lead to Miss Serena Williams for her if she keeps winning. And what a sight to see! All right, young versus old. Uh, Serena is a huge fan of her. She said in a press conference, I think that's amazing. She's a huge fan of the young lady, as she should, you know, as she should, because I know she remembers how it was when she was a young lady, young black lady trying right. to enter into this field with braids in her hair and so on and oh, so yeah. forth. And, oh, yeah, it really, really kick, kicked in the right. door for the for the Sloan yeah, Stevens and exactly. Coco Goffs now of the right, world. Right, right, right. So yep. shout out to them, man. The ladies out here getting it done, Vinny. Uh, so with that being said, Vinny, all right, we know. 
we know that I got I got a, I got a question for old Benny. Okay, this 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 oh, this, word, this, is, right. this is we know. So we're gonna put the we're gonna put the uh, the marketing hat on old Benny. All right. Yeah. Female sports. You know, you know I right. get down. Female sports is not the most marketable thing to watch. All right, and ladies, please don't don't. I don't. We don't want a bunch of bad reviews. Oh y'all, no. Right. I love right. watching sports. All right. I, again, I told you guys I watched earlier. Just earlier, I watched the entire softball game. And if I'd have been home, I'd have watched because when I left the house, it was on my TV because I was going to watch it. It slowed my workout down. For people that know me know I don't like to slow my workout down. So I'm sitting there watching because I want these girls to right. win. I couldn't watch the soccer right. game because I think I waited too late. But I love we love sports, right? Mm-hmm. And at this point right now, this is our dead period for sports. That's what they call it, right? Oh, it's our dead yes. period. Well, the yes. WNBA is going into, well, not quite into All-Star Weekend or All-Star Weekend. Probably, I think they're like two weeks out because they start voting. So about two weeks out, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, we have soccer just ended, all right? Mm-hmm. Softball just ended, all right? Mm-hmm. So at this point right now, I'm asking old mar- marketing genius Benny, all right? Benny Blue Eyes, the marketing genius. How can we make female sports, preferably the WNBA, because it, it has a longer season. It's not a tournament. It's an actual league. How can we make the WNBA more marketable and more profitable? Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Well, it starts with what you're seeing from these other sports and you really it doesn't really matter the gender per se gender race what have you because especially in america because you see how people get down when they see something that they like two words mr bridges to start this train of getting the women's sports where they need to be on the mountaintop great greatness captivates when somebody is very good at what they do People can't help but watch. Prime example, you brought it up in terms of kicking the doors down in a sport that's normally not very accepting of people of certain persuasions. Mm-hmm. We talked about a few a few episodes ago when your guy, your personal favorite, one of, one of your sports heroes, one Tiger Eldrick Woods, Eldrick. was out here running yeah. shit. And think about it. Think about the way he, he kicked stuff down and raised a whole generation, white, black, you know, Puerto Rican and Asian, yeah. to quote uh, the great Fife that's Dog. Right. Uh, he brought people into a sport that they may they may not otherwise check out, and gave them someone to truly root mm-hmm. for. Because normally, traditionally, you want to talk about marginalized sports, things that nor- normally weren't getting huge ratings. Golf was right up there, very niche audience. Right. A lot of people mess right. with it, but it wasn't on a mass scale like NFL, NBA, right. etc. So greatness captivates, and I think someone like Coco is great because, like you said, she has the ball of energy, she has a style, and hey. Shout out to uh to uh, New Balance. I gotta say they're cleaning up. They got Kawhi yeah. and they got her. Hey, no, hey and, good, good job, New yeah. Balance. They are like, you know what? We are gonna get this thing cracking. Yep. We're gonna start this thing off right. Yeah, Kawhi exactly. Leonard in the house tonight. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, mm-hmm. good job, man. And you do it on and you do it on the flip side. You you mentioned this. We mentioned this here in, in episode 122. This being episode 123. Um, the reason why the WNBA struggles is because it's very it's hard to see those moments of greatness right. because there isn't really anybody in the league you got the Skylar Diggins you got the Candace Parkers you got um old girl old girl forgive me she's dope as hell I cannot pronounce her name for the life of me she does ESPN and plays at the same uh, time. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. her sister plays right, in the league. Right. she's dope right. too the problem is there's nobody really in the league right now that's like box right. office as you said makes you stop one Jeremy Eugene Bridges fresh off a bang in there doing supersets and then you look up and you have to stop your right. workout. There's nobody right. really in the WNBA that's gonna make you do that. And you are a sports person. Like and, and they're not and even for the so if you're not gonna stop, right. they're damn sure not gonna make the casual fans stop. Yeah, ladies, so ladies, 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 greatness captain. Ladies and gentlemen, what Benny's trying to make you guys understand with me is that I'll sit and watch an entire Yankees baseball game. If it's yes, on one of the last right. remaining. If it's on TV, dad. like, so when I'm sitting there just watching TV, like, I'll start with the WNBA game, and I'm guilty of it. I ain't gonna lie. I start with a WNBA game, but eventually I'm like, this is fucking boring, all right? I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny, or I'm not trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like we said at the crib, I ain't trying to rip or no shit like that. 
I'm just being completely real. This shit is boring because it's like me watching fucking. It's like it's like me watching high school. It's like I, and and it's, this is just a, this is just a comparison. It's it's like me watching high school JV basketball. Well, you're not gonna, you know, you and it right. ain't, 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 ain't barely. You probably won't have a one guy on the team that can dunk, and he's probably so uncoordinated that he don't even play. You know what I'm saying? Right. So instead of me watching trays and and you know what I'm saying shit like that, like watching you know and watching dope ass dribbling and I don't know, it just gets boring because the, the the great part about the NBA is that somebody will get their ass dunked on, and and then and, and, and you know what I'm saying it's just it, it's just a different feel. Like you know I enjoy people getting their ankles broken, on, on, you know, no matter what gender doing. You know what I'm saying? So you get that with the WNBA, but like Benny is saying, like there's just no big time star power. Right, exactly. Great, greatness captivates. So that's what. And listen, it's not an overnight thing. You can't. You can't just force. Uh, you can't just force stars in a league. Right. But that's that's the beauty of of some of the individual sports or some of the sports that are only in um, in uh, short windows. Right. And that's the other thing too. You see this problem happen with male sports, particularly. You just said baseball. Right. Really, me personally, and again, reviewers who've been rocking with us, I've said this on multiple occasions. Um, I really don't pay attention to baseball until after the All Star break. So, this, like for example, my my dad and I watched a Tigers game. Well, last probably five innings of a right, Tigers right. game a couple days ago. It's July. That's probably not going to happen in April, Mm-mm. right? And it's because it's a long ass season. I get it. There's a whole economics to it. You know, there's a whole thing about it. All the money they make from the stadiums. I get that right. part. But everybody knows that the ratings go through the roof on a sport that's been kind of dying mm-hmm. ratings wise, a la Major League Baseball, right. when the playoffs right. start. People really give a damn when the playoffs start. Especially, as you said in our first segment, when you have certain sports franchise that are good for sports in the big right. one. Like, when the Cubs won, be, the Cubs yeah. have a shit ton Man, of fans. it's crazy, right? A right. shit ton of fans. Right. So when you got, you got, when you, you, know know, when you got ball clubs like, like my Yankees and like, like the Sox and like the Cubbies, like, Yankees are probably right. the biggest one. Like, they got to be. Oh yeah, we got, yeah, we got the largest, we, we, we're the most, probably the most marketable, econo- economic, uh, marketable nationwide, you know, everybody wears Yankee stuff. They don't know who the fucking Yankees are. But you got guys like the Cubbies and the Sox, you know what I'm saying, and the Pirates in, in, in these in these playoffs. And man, it's, it goes up. Man, it's crazy, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, exactly. I've paid. I've, I'm guilty of. I've paid fucking three hundred dollars to go to a Yankees game in the playoffs before. So I'm, you know, I, I gotta be there. Like, you know, what I'm saying I can say, oh, I went to exactly. Yeah, woo, 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 or I was sitting there watching. Because it's the it feeling. Yeah. You know, something's at right. stake. It's the feeling. Especially when of I say I, the Yankees are gonna be in the World Series this year, and I'll be watching every fucking game. You know what I'm saying? Like. Right. It's going to be a beautiful right. thing. Hopefully it gets the Dodgers. Yankees Dodgers, 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 you know what I'm saying? But we, we, yeah, the, the Dodgers just kind of, the Doyers, the Doyers, they just kind of, <laughs> anyway, we don't start talking about baseball. Anyway, ladies, right. ladies, ladies, right? And, and, and these programs of these ladies, these ball clubs, we got to start doing a better job of marketing these women, making these women more visible, right? Getting these women endorsement deals so that they can, one, get paid more because they ain't getting paid shit. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these, a lot of these women go their ass overseas and play ball as soon as the WNBA season is over. So Correct. it's like, start making these women more marketable. Start putting these women and, and matching them up with endorsements of things that might not be so mainstream. Because me personally, if I was Nike or if I was Reebok, like I would try to take the WNBA. You know what I'm saying? And I would just flood exactly. the block. I would flood the block with these female basketball players because there's a huge, huge following of female basketball. Like all, it's a lot of little girls that play basketball to this day. Yeah, that that still love it and they want to be in the WNBA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and how how about this? You want to talk about you're, you're leading me right to it. You want to talk about marketing right. after greatness captivates? Mm-hmm. What makes it stay? It's personality, and JB, I gotta tell you, you were you were referencing the the, the U.S. women's national team in terms of their personality, oh, how they man. celebrate with the goals They're and awesome. everything. Bro, have you have you ever looked at any of a lot of these, whether it's individual sports and, and, and team sports, um, uh, some of the some of these women's uh, Twitter accounts, for example? Mm-hmm. I'll read you one, and I was laughing my ass off. 
on my way down here to Louisville. It came from Rose Lavelle, and this is actually an old tweet, but somebody posted it. It's a great, and she scored one of the goals um, along with uh, uh, Ripino, the, the chick who said, "I'm not, I'm not going to the fucking White right. House." Shout yeah, to her. Like um, Rose Lavelle, she, she's clearly a younger girl, but th- there's a lot of there are a lot of uh, female athletes who have this kind of sense of humor. I picked up on this. She said, "My dad," she said, "My dad just made me dinner and, and yell loser party of one,' and I did not have a comeback." That's funny. Yeah. That's some funny shit. Awesome, right? Like, I mean, look, just, I love, like, just, I love personality, man. Like, I love. You got to showcase personality. Yeah. And a lot of these women have more personality than the oh, dudes. Oh, yeah, easily. Like, look. Honestly. Look, like, look, women, women, they dish it out, you know what I'm saying, big time. Especially, look, jocks, women athletes, come on, man. You have to be because that's you in their world, right. you know what I'm saying? Because you, you were on a college campus and, you know, that's all we do is rip, you know what I'm saying? Like, Right. You, 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 if you hang around the, the, the if you hang around the football team, you got yeah, okay. you got to have thick skin. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. like yeah, these women they they man look again, just the the U.S. female soccer team, just the U.S. women's soccer team alone, man. Just watching them celebrate on the field and acting a fool, and you know what I'm saying like the 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 the. the, the the wild out with the arms raised, and you know what I'm saying, the snatching the shirts off, and you know what I'm saying, doing the slide and the twerking in the locker room after they win with the goggles on, they drinking champagne and beer. Thank you. That's fun. Because they worked their ass off to be at that point. Like why they can't kick ass and celebrate. Like the WNBA is like so I don't know, there's not enough shit talking, ain't enough fighting. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, the NBA gets chippy now. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers throw some hands and some pushing going on and like it's I think it's it's just so they try to make it so womanly. Fuck that man. Women women get their shit cracking too. Fuck you mean. Right. They get they get right. their shit off shit. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying talk, talk, talking their shit, beating their chest. All right, like, you know what I'm saying? It's what you that's what you gotta do. Uh, look, 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 Coco do it. Shit, look, Coco motherfuckers. Get that chest beat going. She talking shit. Right. They, they, yeah. they, they cut. They cut. They cut to her mom. Yeah, her mom wilding. Looks like waving, a, waving, right. flailing arms. You know what I'm saying? But she talking shit with her parents. You know what I'm saying? Beating her chest like, yeah, hell yeah. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie, bro. If Coco runs the table. I would pay a pay-per-view rate to see her mom going crazy and then turn and then slap an English woman wearing a turtleneck, just like Dave Chappelle <laughs> with the five fingers to the face. Smash, man. Yeah. I would the be crazy, on the floor. The craziest part about with Coco, bro, is that when they show the heel, if you watch Wimbledon, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just like uh it's like it, it's just to put an example for you guys, it's like Jurassic Park outside of, of, of where Toronto plays. Right? They have the heel, right. you know what I'm saying? They have this huge right. screen. Showing the women the matches, right? The heel went crazy with Coco one. Two dudes were like mm-hmm. fighting each other, like the fucking brothers on fucking uh, <laughs> smoking aces. You know what I'm saying? Like the fucking the, right. the heels have eyes, brothers. You know what I'm saying? It was like right, it's right, jumping right. on each other, stuff fighting this shit, happy, crunk. Like the bar in Florida goes crazy. You know what I'm saying? The the fucking bowl that yeah. they played in went berserk. And she's loving it. Like she's not gloating. She's not being arrogant about the shit. But she's just showing raw. Gritty, just just j- jovial emotion. It's beautiful, beautiful, and we want to see that, man. We want to see. That's why I can sit and watch a girls' uh, soccer team play any day of the fucking week. I sit and watch them playing it, right? Because I know it's gonna be some wild shit crack, and I love it, right? WNBA, exactly. we need you to be better. We do, we really do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, ladies, shout out to you. We're gonna keep rooting for you, and however however we can help. And honestly, hey, you listen, Real shit. You let know. us know. Like athletes out there, get at us if you if you want to be if you want to be on the yeah. show if you got if you got something happening, hey. we will definitely make time for you and we will make sure you get a quality savage interview on this fight. In the, wor- in the words of Carl Thomas, let's talk about it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, yeah, JB, I'm not gonna lie, we we do a lot of references on the show. I was not expecting Carl what? Thomas hey, on this. Let me tell you something about Carl Thomas, man. Like his 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 debut album, where I want to be. And then his next album, it's a good his album. next album, think about it. Was it was it was his next album? Think about it. She even made me go into the archives now. Right. But his, right. His, his, <laughs> his second album, you know what I'm saying? Was and that's where I got that from. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh. Now you look it up. God damn it. So his first, so his first album was, so his first album was emotional, right? First album was emotional. And what was the second? I think his second album was called Let's Talk About It. But, but that's where I got it from because his intro, you know what I'm saying? His intro, 
is classic. And, and guys, you know, I, I love all music, you know what I'm saying? But I love old school R&B, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God, I love old school R&B. Which is weird, which is weird to call Carl Thomas old school at this point, but hey. I mean, it is what it is. I yeah, I'm, I'm a little older than you guys, you know what I'm saying? So, we got emotion. Okay, hold on. So, we got emotional. <laughs> Got emotional, you know what I'm saying? It was just, and let's talk about it. His second album. So yeah, there it is. The introduction, bad boy, bad boy, Rick. The introduction is so just dope, man. You might have to motherfucking throw that in there. Like I ain't gonna lie. Like I know you know you like. And guys, when I say you might have to throw that in there. We edit this show. Benny Benny does a phenomenal job of editing this show and putting everything together. Oh, thank you, sir. After we record it, you know what I'm saying? So the samples and everything, you hear, that's all Benny, because I don't know how to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? So all I do is come on here and talk shit, you know what I'm saying? And and, and, and let my man, you know what I'm saying, do work his match. So it's just, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. So let's talk about it. WNBA ladies. Well, let's, th- let's, talk about, well, let's talk about one more thing. I know you wanted to, uh, you wanted to pay special tribute. Mm-hmm. Uh, to uh, Cameron Boyce, man, Cameron Boyce. Young, young man who, who passed away, I believe today or was it, it was today? Correct. Uh, it was yeah, time early, early, early this morning. I think it's gonna happen. Early I, morning, I saw right. like you know me being up in my uh, my slumbers, my 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 toss and turns, my slumberless nights, uh, sleep, yeah, you sleepless do. nights, if you will. So yeah, saw it and it broke my heart. I thought people were bullshitting because you know how they did Carlton. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was like, don't don't play it. But I Googled it and I read it. And it said that he had a seizure, a seizure in his sleep because of a previous medical condition. And uh if you don't know this young man, he he played on Grown Ups. He was one of Adam Sandler's youngest son and Grown Ups too. Did a great job in that movie. He also, you probably know him as a parent from Hey Jesse. Which I think is just now called Jesse. I don't know. I think they changed the name mm-hmm. of it because the kids were older and they brought it back. So mm-hmm. yeah. So back in the day, hey Jesse, and then they started to the show Bunked, which my daughter had the pleasure of meeting this young man. The whole Bunked cast when it first, I think the the first year that it was out because she was doing an audition at the same studio, uh, right off Santa Monica Boulevard that Bunked is shot at, and we had the pleasure of meeting Cameron and uh, Sky Jackson. And all of these people, I forget the older girls' names, but we met them all. And my daughter was through the roof with it. And But Cameron, just, the kid shined like a fucking light, man. Like, his smile. And I didn't know the kid was even mixed until, like, like two years ago. <laughs> but, mm-hmm, you know, right. yeah, his father's African-American, his mother's white. And it's like, but the kid just shined, bro. And it was effortless. It's like he wasn't trying to be, like, you know how some people just try to do too much? That wasn't him, you know what I'm saying? He he just he just had that kind of magnitude to him. His aura was just magical. And that smile, you know what I'm saying? Just his whole look with the freckles and the curly hair. He knew this kid was gonna be a star, you know? And that was, man, I, I've been out here for a year. That was probably like the first, that was like the first year, or I was in LA, so that was like 2015, 2016 maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. We met in what, 2016? Uh, late 2015. Yeah, so late 2015. Yeah. So, yeah. So, right around yeah, the so end. that was probably like the beginning of 2016. You know what I'm saying? So, that was three years ago before the kids, you know what I'm saying, careers just really just took off. Um, rest in peace to that young man. Uh, I feel like he's a part of my family because, I, like I said, just meeting him that one time and then watching him grow up on TV, you know? And we've all had people like that that we've watched grow up on TV and that we right. wish the best right. for like that. So, uh, Aaron Boyce, uh, rest in peace. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, you're in a better place, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to continue to watch the episodes. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say, like, a lot of times when I go to sleep, my TV is on Disney Channel. Because uh, I'm, I'm so accustomed to watching that shit with my daughters. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, you're already tuned, right. tuned in already mentally. <laughs> right, so uh, shout out to that young man. And, uh, I, you know, if you guys didn't check us out um, on social media, I did post a story about it. I'm pretty sure it be down by the time this episode comes out tomorrow. But, um that's a great segue to follow us on social media. Uh, yeah. And you did, you did, you did put a, you did put up a post though. You did. Yeah, so I did put I did put up a post. Blue, you know, yeah. so at JB and Benny Blue yep. on Instagram. Go show that love, man, and uh, just check us out, man. You know, saying so we we keep up on current events, we keep up on things that are going on. Not hot take bullshit, but exactly. if it's shit that's cracking, you know, what I'm saying that's important to us. It's going to be on our IG page. Again, I tell people all the time, and I tell people on this show that our IG page is one of the funniest you're going to see. 
we have an array of segments and characters, you know what I'm saying, that will pop up and appear <laughs> right. you know, uh, some during football season, uh, just memes and, and pictures and, and, and videos and stories and everything else that we do, uh, that we do to keep you guys entertained, but keep you informed yep. and to show love yep. to you guys and just make sure that we're giving you guys quality content. Uh, at JB and Benny Blue on Twitter, on Instagram, mm-hmm. on Facebook. Yep. Uh, you can yep. catch our podcast on every listening platform from Google Play yep. to Spotify to iTunes. Castbox, we still need that check. And um, holler at us on the on the on the Savage Line. Give me that number, Benny. Yeah. Eight one eight eight five zero two eight zero. That's right. You can, you can leave us a message. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? You can leave us a voice note, slide in the DMs at JB and Benny right. Blue. And go to JB and Benny Blue Review.com and we have all the past episodes right up there. You could you could go, you know, JB, like how people like to binge on Stranger right. Things and all these other shows. You can binge on oh, our we podcast, got some, oh, we got some, it. You can just let oh, it play. We got some Stranger Things for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we call an Uber right. in the you business. Think he does? You we got me? you. Don't worry about it. We up now. Yeah, we right. up now. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, other than that, man, just peace and love, man. Uh, don't be afraid to love people yeah, right. while they're here. Please exactly. don't be afraid to love people while they're here. Uh, I lost an uncle. We buried him yesterday uh, down in Mississippi. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He was battling cancer for quite a while. Uh, he was my aunt's husband, one of my favorite uncles, Uncle Bernie. I'll rest in peace. Uh, he was a Vietnam veteran, flew, flew helicopters in Vietnam. Uh, one of the dopest dudes I ever met in my life, you know, the one of that, that old shit talking uncle that don't never don't mm-hmm. don't really ever mm-hmm. say shit, but but mm-hmm. when he say something, he say a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was <laughs> Uncle Burnell to the fullest because he was always drinking, always had a little cigarette with him. But you know, what I'm saying he he when he see you, he talk shit to you. You know, what I'm saying like I said, he ain't gonna say a lot, but when he say something, right. man, it's, it, he he done set him out for man, and he's one of those dudes that that didn't give a fuck about nothing but but loving his family. And and wanted to make sure us as youngins was was doing good and and making sure that we was about our shit. And uh, I know I go on these little tangents, these little rants, you know what I'm saying, uh, towards the end of our show. But it'd be shit that I'd be feeling, Benny. Um, mm-hmm. Men, we gotta we gotta we gotta do our thing. All right, uh, that's all, men, because we're losing our our boys. All right, right now, uh, it's up to us to raise them to be better than our grandparents were, than better than we were. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Hatred is taught, but with anything that can be taught, it can be untaught. It can be erased. So if we continue to push for what's right, man, imagine how great this world would be. Right. Be a beautiful place. And we're, do, we're doing our part because, damn it, we're for the people. Always. So you, you keep, keep listening to us. We will keep giving you the quality content as Mr. Bridges Broke it down very clearly break, break, as he does at the end of the show, man. Yes. That's right. For reviewers, be safe. Uh, summer is a, is in peak form. We know, you know, it, it, get, it gets hot in these streets more ways than one. Um, so please be safe. Uh, you know, um, yeah, we've as JB said, you know, we we both we both lost people that were at the time boys that didn't have a chance to be men. Right. So right. we know what that we know what that feels right. like. So be safe in these streets, please. Um, so you can keep rocking with us because we rock. Oh, with hey, real quick, you LA cats out there, you California LA cats, uh, up oh, up the, up the San Andreas fault line, motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, get your get your earthquake kits and keep them handy. Um, yeah, I got to get my one. I get it's back. real. Like, place. It's not a it's not a fucking game, man. Earthquakes cause a lot of damage. They call them earthquakes for a reason. And ju- just right. in case you didn't know. The reason why it's so dangerous, you know what I'm saying? One, because the earth actually opens up and engulfs shit. And two, mm-hmm. power is underground, right? Your power is ran underground, right. so you might go without power for three days based on an earthquake. Mm-hmm. So, man, get your earthquake packs together. Uh, it's been a, been a few out there. Uh, we're going to pray that it don't be no more. But, hey. Yeah, please. Better, not. better please. safe than sorry. You know, I love y'all out there. Again. Again. And I got my golden, my golden child finger working right now. Eddie, right, he's wagging a my, finger for those. Who my Eddie see. Murphy squint eye golden finger waving finger. So right. there's a possibility JB might be in those LA streets next week. Possibly. And if I am, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming to kick ass and take names, baby. Coming to kick ass and take names, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and yep. Benny going to be rocking like we always do. And uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Real shit. So, 
We love y'all. Right. We love y'all. We love y'all. Yeah. We love you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we like you too. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. love you too. Right. <laughs> yeah, even the guy with the MAGA hat on, we love you too, bro. Right. We know you're misguided, right. undecided, but we love you back. Right. All right. Right. Um, for the JB and Benny Brew Review. That's it. We out. Till next time. Peace ain't nothing. Peace, Peace ain't nothing but the motherfucking index and middle finger, baby. Bam. Power. Here it is. You. Yeah.